Hello everyone, welcome to Talon Sprint. So in this session of geography, we shall discuss the earthquakes. Okay, the part four of the geography earthquakes. So what do you know about earthquakes? So we shall discuss in detail. So earthquakes and volcanoes are generally related terms. These are sudden movements inside the earth's interior of the earth. Okay, so inside the earth we have sudden movements which will create earthquakes and volcanoes. And what are earthquakes? Earthquake is nothing but it is a sudden vibration. Because I have already told you in the plate tectonics theory, when the plates are moving sometimes there may be a disturbance. So because of this sudden vibration or collision, there will be a sudden trembling inside the earth. So this will create lot of earthquake waves are also called as seismic waves. Okay, so earthquakes can be man-made as well as natural. So don't think earthquakes are only natural. They are also man-made. Suppose there is a dam built near a place. So because of the heavy gush of water, there may be earthquake at that place also. Okay, those are called reservoir induced earthquakes. We shall discuss all the earthquakes types and what the earthquakes which were majorly occurred in India, all those things. So first terms associated with earthquakes. So the first term is focus. So what do you mean by focus? The point where the earthquake originates is called focus. And what do you mean by epicenter? Suppose now the focus, at the focus the earthquake has originated. Now all the body waves will travel in all the directions. But the shortest distance to the surface, the first wave will reach to the shortest, at the shortest distance and reach the surface and hit a point that point is called as epicenter so we can call the epicenter it is directly below the focus it is the shortest distance from the focus to the surface of the earth focus is also called as hypocenter remember the where the earthquake originates is called focus or hypocenter and the first point which gets the destruction which has the shortest distance from the focus is the epicenter on the surface. Clear with this? Moving on to types of seismic waves. When the earthquake is produced, there will be a lot of vibration and this will result to different types of seismic waves or the earthquake waves. We, generally, we have two types of seismic waves. One is body waves and other is called as surface waves. So inside the earth crust, First the earthquake will be produced at the focus then the vibrations will be passing on inside the earth that those waves are called as body waves because they pass inside the earth. So these waves will touch the surface then the surface waves will be moving on the surface and which will cause destruction on the earth's surface. Okay. So first body waves then surface waves. Okay. Body waves will travel in all the directions. Okay, moving on, there are two types of body waves. We have primary waves that is P waves and secondary waves S waves. And in terms of body waves, also interact with the surface waves and the surface waves will be produced on the earth's crust where we are standing now. So surface waves we can feel it, right? So these surface waves are also called as L waves. So P primary waves secondary waves s waves these two are body waves and surface waves are l waves so first the body waves then the surface waves hope you understood this so primary waves or p waves primary waves move faster than all the other waves they are first to originate from the focus and they'll travel in all directions and touch the surface so they will reach the surface first okay and they have higher frequency and they can travel in all mediums irrespective if it is solid, liquid or any gases. So they can travel through all media irrespective of solid, liquid or gases. And uh, velocity of P waves is higher in solids than li in liquids than in gases. Okay, clear with this. Next is secondary waves or S waves. So after the P waves are produced, then the S waves are produced, that is secondary waves. So they have lesser velocity than P waves and they are second to touch the surface and they can travel only through solids. Remember this, secondary waves or S waves will travel only through solids. They cannot pass through liquids or gases. But P waves can travel in all 
media but s waves cannot travel in liquids and gases they travel only through solids and next waves the last waves is the surface waves or l waves they are produced after the p and s waves touch the surface then the surface waves or l waves are produced these are more destructive because this will cause the damage after the epi epicenter the surface waves will move from the epicenter and near nearby buildings will collapse okay so p s and l waves so first to reach the surface is p waves then s waves then l waves sometimes this was asked once what is the order of the waves which reach the surface first p then s then l waves okay moving on to shadow zone what do you mean by shadow zone where these waves will not appear is called as shadow zone hope you can clearly see on the diagram so the shadow zone of p waves is 105 to around 140 degrees centigrade okay and uh, the shadow zone of s waves is 105 degrees to 105 so the shadow zone of s waves is higher than the shadow zone of p waves okay at that juncture these p waves will not occur inside the earth surface okay clear with this moving on to next measurement how we measure earthquake we hear in news uh, earthquake of magnitude 7 is more destructive so what is the measurement tools which are used what are the scales what are the different scales which we use in the measurement of earthquakes so earthquakes are measured in different instant magnitude and intensity generally the device used to measure the earthquakes is seismograph okay and the scale used is magnitude scale so the richter scale is used to measure the magnitude of the earthquake okay how much destructive it is how much destructive it is this is called the magnitude okay generally above 7 is highly destructive in nature so it is calibrated on the scale of 0 to 10 okay above 7 is more destructive okay and next scale is intent intensity scale what do you mean by intensity scale so after the earthquake has happened how much destruction it will cause to the human beings and the life of other beings this is called intensity so this is calculated as per Mercalli scale it is it ranges from 1 to 12 okay how much destruction it will cause after the high destructive earthquake suppose if a magnitude 7 earthquake as per Richter scale is has been caused now the Mercalli scale will uh, tell that it will cause higher destruction ranging from 1 to 12 is the scale of Mercalli scale units okay so Richter scale is for magnitude and Mercalli scale is for intensity and seismograph is a device used to measure the earthquakes clear with this and uh, these are some of the seismic zones where the India is divided hope you can see clearly the zone 5 I have already told you at the plate junctures at the plate juncture it is highly prone for earthquakes and so you can see the north, uh, northern states and northeastern states are in zone 5 and zone 4. They are more prone to earthquakes. Clear with this? Okay. And Himalayas were formed because of the uh, convergence of the Eurasian plate and the Indian uh, Australia New Zealand plate okay clear with this so at the juncture of the two plates it is more prone to see hyderabad and uh, chennai all these bengaluru places are in zone 2 because they are lesser prone to earthquakes because they are in the middle of the indian plate clear with this so these are the seismic zones earth um, our india is divided it is divided into five seismic zones okay moving on to the types of the earthquakes there are various types of earthquakes the first is tectonic earthquakes so these are formed due to the sliding of rocks at a fault line suppose there are two rocks there is a trap there so at that juncture there may be a tectonic earthquake and then next is volcanic earthquakes so during the time of uh, volcan volcano there may be earthquake also okay don't think earthquakes and volcanoes will happen separately they can happen all at a time okay next is collapse earthquakes suppose the uh, mining roofs or the granite quarry suppose they collapse so they may induce an earthquake this is a man-made earthquake 
and next some more types like explosion earthquake suppose any nuclear device has uh, suddenly exploded or suppose any cracker uh, of high frequency has exploded so there may be uh, sometimes there may be bomb blasts uh, in the uh, mining areas so that may also cause an earthquake near in the nearby areas and uh, reservoir induced earthquakes i've already told you at the start so sometimes there may be reservoirs the water may be gushing at a higher speed so this may cause an earthquake at that place these are some of the types of earthquakes okay and there are some major earthquakes in india which were happened in the earlier times the first is the assam earthquake which caused la larger destruction in 1950 and next is bhuj earthquakes this also caused a larger destruction it had around 8 plus magnitude on richter scale bhuj in gujarat in 2001 and next is 2004 which we don't remember tsunami sorry which we don't forget okay tsunami in the indian ocean okay which we have lost a lot of lives in the southern areas also indonesia myanmar areas and uh, nepal in 2015 we have helped nepal in uh, recovery of this right so these are some of the major earthquakes uh, india also had tremors because of the 2015 nepal earthquake okay so earthquake may happen any time and there is no uh, prescribed time that earthquake will happen now or tomorrow okay because of the plate movements in the earth surface there will be uh, earthquakes happening and these are artificial earthquakes so, sorry this is uh, the natural earthquakes and earthquakes can also be man made so hope you have learned enough things about earthquakes in this topic we shall meet in the next sessions thank you so much